All right. Now that we've created our block model and our ellipsoid, we're going to estimate our block model for copper. So we need to go into our block model settings for that. We can either press B um, on the keyboard, or we can go up to our set panel and click block model. This will view our block model dialog box. We have one block model here currently, block model one. That's the visible on the screen. And we can go to estimation. And we have four main uh, items here, estimation settings. That is where we set up the, all the settings for estimating this block model. We can clear the estimation if the block model has already been estimated. This one is already clear. Estimate will use the estimation settings above to, est to populate the block model. And we have the option of testing a block. So let us view estimation settings. In the estimation dialog box, we have on the left a list of our variables, copper. Um, if we had more variables, then we can set the estimation type for each particular variable. So on the top, the estimation type, we have estimation, which includes both inverse distance as well as nearest neighbor. We could go to Krieging, or we could choose none. Uh, none is not particularly important for this one variable, but if we had five or six variables here, uh, there may be uh, many of those variables we don't want to estimate, and we can uh, speed up the process by clicking none. So for this one, we're going to go to uh, copper and we're going to click on the set F estimation so this will bring up a dialog box of all the different parameters so for this one we have methods to use we can have a user defined script um, so if you want the complete customization for uh, your estimation parameters you can build your own script and use that we can click on inverse weighted distance with exponent. So with the standard exponent here is two, we have inverse square distance. We could change that to inverse distance. We could put a three in there and make cubed inverse cube distance. Um, but for now, I'm gonna leave it at two. Uh, then we have another option here, use ellipsoid influence distances in calculation. Uh, so if we want to use the inverse or use the ellipsoid influence distances in the calculation, it's going to take the x, y, z distance of the ellipsoid and convert that to a percentage. Um, if your composite is 70% of the y distance and another one is 60% of the y distance uh, or say of the z distance, it might choose the 60% of the z distance um, regardless of the absolute distance. So I'm going to have that selected because then it, it gives uh, preference to your ellipsoid. Discretization allows splitting a block into smaller blocks in order to estimate the distance between the block and a composite. If a discretization of 111 is used, then the distance between the center of the block and a composite will be used. However, if 222 is used, for example, the average distance between the composite and the resulting eight centers of the subblocks will be used for the estimation. Take a look at the search. So the search, we use our composite set to find the, the composites for the estimation, and that's the right set we have set up. We can have multiple passes. Um, for now, we only have one. The ellipsoid, we can select our ellipsoid. If we wanted to, although it's outside of the scope of this particular video, we could use a variable ellipsoid. Uh, the variable ellipsoid will allow us to generate a path, and we could have the ellipsoid follow along a fold in your uh, model. Uh, it's, uh, again, outside of the, the scope of this particular video. Um, then we have our ellipsoid parameters. So the minimum composites per block, let's say we want at least two composites per block. The maximum composites per block, we'll set that to eight. Um, we can limit the number of composites per drill hole. So for instance, maybe we only want to have maximum of three composites per drill hole. 
um, and then we can use the ellipsoid influence distances in composite selection versus the real distances. Now that's the same as what I described earlier for the method of estimation, except for this time it's not used for the estimation, but is actually used for the selection of composites. Um, and then the search type, we have a regular search type or we have octant search. The octant search is outside of the scope of this particular video, but it's good to note that it's possible to do. Uh, within here, we can uh, limit the estimation by, um, limit the blocks by an envelope. However, the block model we created was already limited by an envelope. So we'll leave that blank. We could also composite screen by envelope. Um, again, that's already been done through the creation of the block model, so we can leave that blank. If we take a look at our variable to use, we're going to be using copper, has a default value of zero. We cannot change that in this particular spot. We'll leave these as a zero, zero to uh, keep it uh, open. So it'll take any of these values. Um, the specific gravity variable is locked in this particular case, as well as the recovery. So we'll click OK. Um, you also may note that you could copy to a variable these settings, or you can copy to a block model these settings. Um, and so right now we're going to click OK. And we've set up our block model for estimation. So let us estimate. Click OK. And you'll notice that the block model has been estimated. Uh, there's a few small blocks here that don't have um, any, uh, any estimates yet, but most of the block model has been estimated. So I was hoping that all of the blocks would have been estimated. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually s expand my ellipsoid. So I'm going to press L, or I can go up to my set panel and click ellipsoid, and it'll bring up my ellipsoid list. And I'm going to change the major axis to 100, the median axis to 80, and I'm going to leave the minor axis of 20. And now I'm going to go back into my block models list by pressing B. And I'm going to go to my estimation and I'm going to clear estimation. And I wanted to do this so I can give you an example of clearing an estimation. Now it's unestimated. Let's click here. You can see it's all unestimated. Go back to our block model list. We want to continue using the same estimation parameters we had before. We've just changed our ellipsoid. We're going to click estimate and go OK and now you can see this time that all of our blocks have been populated. OK let's take a look at one of our blocks we can see it's populated it has a fixed density we still have not classified it the name of the envelope new envelope uh, sample average distance 37.75 meters pass number one we only made one pass we had the predefined variable selected earlier copper underscore Krieging underscore standard error I did not use Krieging to estimate this so it is with a default negative one otherwise missing value um, and the copper grade for this particular block is 7.14 percent so now that we have them all populated let us create a a resource report. We're going to press B again or go to block model menu here on the panel and click report, resource report, and it has a new dialog box. It's a report for block models, block model number one. Um, I already have copper selected. You may see it like this where there's no uh, items selected. We can select our copper variable to report. We have a list here, filtering variable. We could filter it by, say, a cutoff. However, we don't have a filtering variable created right now. I can create one, and I will create one when I do the resource report after classification. We could do a present variable. Um, we don't have percent blocks, so we're not going to use that for now. Density variable, it is a fixed variable. 
and we have a order of sorting. So none by classification, by bench. Uh, I'm going to click none. That's the default. It will sort by classification already. And I'm going to click OK. It's going to prompt me to enter a name of a file. I'm going to change this to comma separated value. And I'm going to call it resource unclassified as this is here. And I'm going to click save. Yes, I will replace over top of that. Yes, I do want to visualize the report. Microsoft Excel opens up with the report. I will switch the formatting just a bit so we can see it clearer. Okay, change these to have a comma in there for the placeholders. All right, so the report that gets generated is a resource report, report by classification with the date and time. Density is fixed density. It's for the block model number one. Uh, resource class has unclassified, inferred, indicated, measured, indicated and measured and total. Uh, because we did not classify our block model yet, the indicated, inferred, measured blocks are all empty. Uh, the resource has 5.3878% copper grade in the unclassified section with 989,000 cubic meters for 2.67 million tons. And the total reflects the same. So the next uh, video, we're going to classify our block model.